Hi, welcome back to my channel. I compare the Cloud Data Warehouse Solutions AWS Redshift and GCP BigQuery last time. Snowflake has recently become more and more popular. Let's compare three popular Cloud Data Warehouse Solutions, AWS Redshift, Snowflake, and GCP BigQuery today. These three popular cloud data warehouse solutions can run analytical queries against bitbytes to exabytes of data with highly scalability, cost effectiveness, and security. GCP BigQuery was announced in May 2010 and made generally available in November 2011. It leverages Google's blog, the largest scale cluster management system, and Dremel, the execution engine. AWS Redshift is based on the older version of PostgreSQL with the changes to that version. An initial preview beta was released in November 2012, and the full release was made available on February 15, 2013. Snowflake has run on AWS 3 since 2014, on Microsoft Azure since 2018, and on the GCP since 2019. Both AWS and GCP are platform as a service pass solution supported with the occurring used in Ansin SQL. Snowflake is a database as a service SaaS solution. At the time of this video, AWS Redshift is still the leading data warehouse cloud solution in the market, but Snowflake has grown significantly faster than the other two in the past 12 months. In this video, I will just summarize the three cloud data warehouse solutions architectures. You can review my course of Redshift, also the Redshift architecture overview and the BigQuery architecture overview videos from my channel for the details. AWS Redshift fully managed data warehouse solution is based on the PostgreSQL but beyond just the PostgreSQL. The core infrastructure component of AWS Redshift Data Warehouse is a cluster. A cluster is composed of one or more computer nodes. The client application interacts directly only with the lead node. Inside each computer node, it is partitioned into slides. Redshift reduces I.O. through columnar storage, data compression, and massively parallel processing, MPP. AWS Redshift also introduced Redshift Spectrum that directly performs SQL queries on data stored in the AWS S3 bucket. This can save the time and the money without moving data from the storage service to the data warehouse. BigQuery's architecture is different from a traditional node-based cloud data warehouse solution or massively parallel processing MPP systems. BigQuery's serverless architecture decouples storage and compute and allows them to scale independently on demand. From the user's standpoint, with the serverless service, users do not have the visibility or control over the individual service or cluster of servers. BigQuery has two services, storage service and query service, that are collected by Google's high-speed Jupyter networking infrastructure. BigQuery storage service automatically shares and shares data in Google's Clusters underlying file system. The tables are stored as a highly compressed columns to provide durability and availability. The storage service supports bulk data ingest and streaming ingest. The query service runs interactive or batch queries. It integrates with other GCP data processing services through connectors. It can also run query jobs on data contained in the cloud storage. Under the hood, BigQuery leverages both the larger-scale cluster manager system and Dremel, 
the execution engine for the services. Snowflake is a SaaS solution with zero management from end users. It's three layers of architecture separate data storage, data processing, and data consumption. Similar to the sharded disk architectures, Snowflake uses a central data repository for persistent data that is accessible from all computer nodes in the platform. It processes queries using the MPP computer cluster, where the node in the cluster stores a portion of the entire data set locally. And it supports multiple ways of connecting to the servers, such as web UI, command line, like the slow SQL, ODBC, GDBC drivers, native and third-party connectors. Here is the summary of the architecture comparison I just went through. Let's compare the features in the following areas. The first one is on infrastructure management. AWS Redshift is fully managed with automated provision and automated backup. GCP BigQuery is completely serverless. It separates storage and computing. Snowflake is zero management from end users, separate data storage, data processing, and data consumption. In the programmatic interaction, AWS Redshift supports all languages with JDBC and ODBC. GCP BigQuery supports REST API, client libraries in Java, Python, Node.js, C Sharp, Go, Ruby, and PHP. Snowflake also supports JDBC, ODBC, Go, .NET, Node.js, PHP, and Python. It also supports native clients such as connectors, drivers, etc., provided by the Snowflake. On data ingestion, you can load the static data from AWS S3 EMR DynamoDB table and the remote hosts to AWS Redshift. You can load the streaming data using AWS Kinesis to the AWS Redshift. You can load the data from cloud storage, cloud data store backups, cloud data flow, and the streaming data sources to GCP BigQuery. You can use familiar data integration tools like Informatica, Talent, and others out of a box to the GCP BigQuery. In Snowflake, you can load the data from or external table in AWS S3, GCP Cloud Storage, Microsoft Azure Storage. You can use a slow pipe to load the small volumes of data. You can load the streaming data from Apache Kafka topics. On foundation for ML and AI, AWS Redshift uses machine learning to optimize its performance. The predictive analytics with AWS SageMaker is in preview at the time of this video. GCP BigQuery besides bring the ML to your data with BigQuery ML, it also integrates with the AI platform and TensorFlow enable you to training powerful models on the structured data in the minutes with just SQL. I really like this feature in GCP BigQuery and looking forward to exploring the same feature in AWS Redshift. Snowflake also doesn't have foundation for ML and AI, but it supports ML AI applications. The next one is result caching. AWS Redshift uses result caching to deliver sub-second response times for repeat queries. GCP BigQuery writes all query results to a table, either a temporary cached results table without charge or a permanent table with a storage charge. Snowflake store all query results for 24 hours or 90 days for enterprise customers or until the underlying data changes. Let's compare the scalability. AWS Redshift controls the local storage configuration so the user can't scale resource independently. Resizing or changing the machine instant type requires cluster reconfiguration with read-only mode during this reconfiguration. 
GCP BigQuery is a fully elastic data warehouse. It can automatically and rapidly provision with the Borg, the larger scale cluster management system, and Dremel, the execution engine. Slowflake separates the storage and the compute, so it can scale up and down independently and immediately. Metadata service also scales up and down as necessary. Training solver rules can be sliced up with easy by multiple concurrent users. The last one is on maintenance. AWS Redshift automatically runs the vacuum delete operation to reclaim disk space. GCP BigQuery uses the expiration settings to remove unneeded tables and partitions. Slowflake is low maintenance with zero management from end users. The performance is tricky on all data warehouse solutions. It depends on the size of the data table, schema complexity, and the number of concurrent queries, etc. The different benchmarks show different results. I suggest you test with your benchmarks in three systems to compare the performance for your use case. Take the advantage of AWS Redshift's two-month free trial for the customer that has never created the Redshift cluster. GCP $300 credits with its free tier account and Snowflake's trial account with free credits at the time of this video. I did include the two different performance results link in my previous AWS Redshift vs. GCP BigQuery post to show the different stories. The links did provide 2020 test results among cloud data warehouse solutions. Both data warehouse solutions provide very similar security features. On the access controls, both platforms leverage their IAM to set up rules and permissions. On the encryption at rest, both platforms leverage their key manager system to do the database encryption and the server client-side encryption on the load data files. BigQuery supports encryption by default, Redshift also supports HSM. On data in transit, both platforms include a virtual private cloud with PC and SSL connections. On data loss to provision, AWS DLP service mesh doesn't support a redshift at the time of this video. Google Cloud DLP service supports BigQuery. On the other hand, Slowflake, the SaaS solution, runs on the public cloud, so it secures as a per cloud provides security features, but it feared for the industry standard security for the cloud solution. Now let's move to the cost comparison. AWS Redshift's pricing model covers both storage and computing costs. You can choose from the IA3 built on the AWS natural system with managed storage, dense compute, or dense storage nodes types. The cheapest node DC2 large with 160 GB will cost you $0.25 cents per hour. Let's go to the AWS Redshift pricing calculate to calculate the cost and the Redshift service. Select one DC2 large load on demand, one terabyte additional backup storage, and a 10 terabyte Redshift spectrum. The total monthly cost is $256.05. You can pay up front for the discount. Well, GCP's BigQuery pricing model is another story. It is complicated based on active versus long-term, flat rate versus on-demand, streaming inserts versus queries versus storage API, 
different pricing model on BigQuery, BigQuery ML, BigQuery BI engine, and BigQuery data transport service. It separates the storage cost and query cost. Storage cost is two cents per gigabyte per month, and the query cost is five dollar per terabyte. The storage is cheaper than AWS Redshift, but the query cost can end up quickly. Let's go to the GCP pricing calculator to play around the cost estimate. Let's try on demand with 10 terabytes storage, 10 gigabytes of streaming insert, and a 1 terabyte of query. The total monthly cost is $205.11, which is not bad. Now let's try flat rate with 50 slides, slots, 10 terabytes of storage. 10 gigabytes of streaming insert. Well, you cannot input 50 slots. Let's change it to 100 slots. The total monthly cost is $2,410.22. You can also do the cost estimate on BigQuery ML. Slow Flakes pricing model is also not a straight Storage cost is $23 terabytes per month if paid up front, or $40 terabytes per month if on demand, plus the computing cost. You can use the formula to calculate the computing cost is equal to minutes consumed time, cost per node times nodes per cluster times the number of cluster. So from a slow flake pricing to estimate on demand with a 10 terabytes of storage is $400. A 10 node cluster of L size warehouse computing is 32 credits per hour time $4 enterprise equal $128 per hour. You can save a cost by minimizing computing and configure, configuring with auto suspend equal number of the automatic shutdown after number seconds of inactivity. Here is my conclusion. Three popular cloud data warehouse solutions, AWS Redshift, Snowflake, and GCP BigQuery are highly scalable enterprise data warehouse solutions to make data analytics more productive with unmatched price performance. They all take care of infrastructure management and database administration responsibilities, so you can focus on business needs using the familiar SQL and coding development. From the cost standpoint, unpredictable and complex BigQuery's pricing model versus roughly estimated Snowflake's pricing model versus simple and predictable Redshift pricing model, so you may want to estimate your cost and do a performance benchmark before select the solution. I like the Snowflake's zero management from end users to quickly start the virtual warehouse. I also like AWS Redshift Spectrum concept. Redshift also gives the level of control over your data warehousing setup and performance tuning. BigQuery's ML is very impressive. BigQuery is completely serverless with an in-memory BI engine and a machine learning built-in. So the correct data warehouse solution decision should depend on your user cases, cost estimate, and the performance benchmark. Thanks for watching and as always subscribe to my channel for more great cloud computing learning tips. See you next time.